now let's learn some random topics totally unrelated with each other but still we are going to learn them together so first is about parkinson's disease parkinson's disease which is also known as paralysis agitans results from widespread destruction of the portion of a substantia nigra the pi compacta compacta that sends dopamine secreting nerve fibers to the caudate nucleus and ethamine this disease is characterized by rigidity of much of the musculature of the body involuntary trauma of the involved areas even when the person is resting at a fixed rate of 3 to 6 cycles per second serious difficulty in initiating movement is called akinesis akinesia akinesia akinesis is something which is related to movement so akinesia then postural instability caused by impaired post neural reflexes leading to poor balance and falls other motor symptoms include dysphagia impaired ability to swallow speech disorder disturbances and fatigue due to disturbances and fatigue the cause of the sub the causes of up this abdomen abnormal motor effects are unknown However, the dopamine secreted in the caudate nucleus and ethamine is an inhibitory transmitter. Therefore, destruction of the dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra of the Parkinson patient theoretically would allow the caudate nucleus and ethamine to become overly active and possibly cause continuous output of excitatory signals to the corticospinal motor control system. these signals could overly excite many of all of the muscles of the body thus leading to rigidity some of the feedback circuits might easily oscillate because of high feedback gains after loss of their inhibition leading to the trauma of parkinson's disease this trauma is quite different from the cerebellar disease because it occurs during all waking hours and therefore an involuntary trauma is contradiction to the cerebellar trauma which occurs only when the play person performs intentionally initiated movements and therefore is called intention trauma like anxiety or something the akinesia that occurs in parkinson's disease is often much more distressing to the patient than the other symptoms of muscle rigidity and tremor because a person with severe parkinsonism must exert the highest degree of concentration to perform even the simplest movement the mental effort even mental anguish which is necessary to make the desired movements is often an inhibit of person's will power when then when the movements do occur they are usually stiff and stuck to in character instead of smooth the cause of this akinesia is still speculated however dopamine secretion in the limbic system especially in the nucleus accumbens is often decreased along with its decrease in the basal ganglia it has been suggested that this decrease might reduce the psychic drive for motor activity so greatly that akinesia akinesia results in treatment with de lupa de l dopa l dopa administration of the drug l dopa to patients with parkinson's disease usually ameliorates many of the symptoms especially the rigidity and akinesia The reason for this amelioration is believed to be that L-dopa is converted in the brain into dopamine and the dopamine then restores the normal balance between inhibition and excitation in the caudate nucleus and ethamine. Administration of dopamine does not have the same effect because dopamine has a chemical structure that will not allow it to pass through the blood-brain barrier. The slightly different structure of L-dopa allows it to pass through this barrier. The treatment with L D prenyl another treatment for parkinson's disease is the drug L D prenyl this drug inhibits monoamine oxidase which is responsible for the obstruction of most of the dopamine after it has been secreted therefore many dopamine that is released remains in the basal ganglia tissues for a longer time in addition for reasons that are not understood this treatment helps to slow destruction of the dopamine secreting neurons in the substantia nigra therefore appropriate combinations of delu l dopa therapy along with l deprenyl prenyl deprenyl l deprenyl therapy usually provide much better treatment than use of one of these drugs alone so this disease is also called paralysis agitans 
results from the widespread destruction of ocean as a substantial nigra that sends dopamine secreting nerve fibers to the caudal cortex and pituitary region next is about cerebrospinal fluid cerebrospinal fluid the entire cerebral cavity enclosing the brain and spinal cord has a capacity of about 1600 to 1700 ml about 150 ml of this capacity is occupied by cerebrospinal fluid and the remainder in the by the brain and cord this fluid is present in the ventricles of the brain and the cistern is around the outside of the brain and in the sub arachnoid space around both the brain and the spinal cord all these chambers are connected with one another and the pressure of the fluid is maintained at a surprisingly constant level cushioning function of the cerebrospinal fluid a major function of the csf is to cushion the brain within its solid walls the brain and the csf have about the same specific gravity so the brain simply floats on the fluid therefore a blow to the head it is not too intense moves the entire brain simultaneously with the skull causing no one portion of the brain to be momentarily contorted by the blow and then counter cook when a blow to the heart head is extremely severe it may not damage the brain on the side of the head where the blow is struck it is likely to damage the opposite side this phenomenon is not called counter coup e counter coup c o n t r e c o p p okay and the reason for this effect is the following when the blow is struck the fluid the fluid on the struck side is so incompressible and the flow is struck the fluid on the neck struck side is so incompressible that as the skull moves the fluid pushes the brain at the same time in in isen with the skull on the opposite side to the area that is struck the sudden movement of the whole skull causes the skull to pull away from the brain momentarily because of the brain's inertia creating for a split second vacuum space in the cranial walls in the area opposite to the blow and when the skull is no longer being accelerated by the blow the vacuum suddenly collapses and the brain strikes the inner surface of the skull the pores and inferior surfaces of the frontal and temporal lobes where the brain comes into contact with the bony protuberance in the base of the skull are often the site of injury and bruises or contusions after a severe blow to the head such as that experienced by a boxer if the contusion occurs on the same side as the impact injury it is a coup injury if it occurs on the opposite side the contusion is a counter coup injury coup and in counter coup injuries can also be caused by rapid acceleration or deceleration alone and the absence of physical impact due to the blow of the head this have instances the brain may bounce off the wall of the skull causing a coup injury and then also bounce off the opposite side causing a counter coup contusion such injuries are that to occur for example in shaken baby syndrome for sometimes a vehicular accidents formation flow and absorption of cerebrospinal fluid csf is formed at a rate of about 500 ml each day which is 3 to 4 times as much as the total volume of fluid in the entire csf system there are three means of csf as produced about two thirds of more of this fluid originates as secretion from the choroid plexus in the four ventricles mainly into the two lateral ventricles choroid plexus additional small amount of fluid are secreted by the ependymal surfaces of all the ventricles and by the arachnoid membranes a small amount comes from the brain through the perivascular spaces that surround the blood vessels passing through the brain choroid plexus and then through the csf system the fluid secreted in the lateral ventricles passes first into third ventricle lateral ventricle later into third ventricle after addition of a minute amounts of fluid from the third ventricle it flows downward along the fluid from the third ventricle into the aqueduct of cilius into the fourth ventricle but still another minute amount of fluid is added finally the fluid passes out of the fourth ventricle through the small three small openings to lateral foramina of leshka and the midline foramen of magendi i'm not sure about the pronunciation m a g e n d i e entering the cisterna magna 
a fluid space that lies behind the medulla and beneath the cerebellum. The cisterna magna is continuous with the subarachnoid space that surrounds the entire brain and spinal cord. Almost all the CSF then flows upward from the cisterna magna through the subarachnoid space surrounding the cerebrum. From there, the fluid flows into and through the simple multiple arachnoidian villi, arachnoidian, arachnoidian villi that project into the larger sagittal venous sinus and other venous sinuses into the cerebellum. This any extra fluid empties into the venous fluid through pores of this villi. Functions of the cerebrospinal fluid, mechanical cushion, excretory, removal of harmful brain metabolites, buffer, medium for nutrient exchanges, regulatory medium for transferring signals to regulatory factors. Natural ventricles, arachnoidian, arachnoidian villi, foramen of Monroe, third ventricle, acurectus sylvius and Pintorium cerebellae, fourth ventricle, foramen of Magendai. These are very important portions related to this. Secretion of the secretion by the choroid plexus. The choroid plexus, a section of which is very important, is a cauliflower like growth of blood vessels covered by a thin layer of epithelial cells. This plexus projects into the temporal horn of each lateral ventricle. The posterior portion of the third ventricle and the roof of the fourth ventricle. Posterior portion of the third ventricle and the roof of the fourth ventricle. Secretion of fluid into the ventricles by the choroid, choroid plexus depends mainly on active transport of sodium ions through the epithelial cells lining the outside of the plexus. The sodium ions in turn pull along large amounts of chloride ions as well as because the positive charge of the sodium ion attracts the chloride ion negative charge. These two ions combine to increase the quality of osmotically active sodium chloride in the CSF. which in then causes almost immediate osmosis of the water through the membrane, thus providing the fluid of secretion. Less important transport process move small amounts of glucose into the CSF and both potassium and bicarbonate ions out of the CSF into the capillaries. This is the composition of the CSF is as follows. Before that, chloride plexus in a lateral ventricle, artery, epin, epindima, vein, tenia, Fornicus, Tela, Cordo, Idea, Tenia, Cordo, Idea, Choroidea, Choroidea, I'm sorry, Choroidea, then blood vessels, Epidema, Villus Epithelium, Villus Connected Tissue, these are the regions. And result in the composition of the CSF is like osmotic pressure approximately equal to that of plasma. Sodium ion concentration also approximately equal to that of plasma. Chloride ion about 15% greater than plasma. Potassium ion approximately 40% less. Glucose about 30% less, almost protein and cell free. Absorption of cerebrospinal fluid through the arachnoidal villi. The arachnoidal, arachnoidal villi are microscopic finger like inward projections of the arachnoidal membrane through the walls and into the venous sinus. Conglomerates of this villi from macroscopic structures called arachnoidal granulations that can be seen protruding into sinus. The endothelial cells converting the villi have been shown by electron microscopy to have a circular passage directly through the bodies of the large enough to allow relatively free flow of CSF allowing protein molecules, dissolved protein molecules and even particles as large as red and white blood cells into the anus blood. Then perivascular spaces and cerebrospinal fluid. The larger arteries and veins of the brain lie on the surface of the brain, but their ends penetrate inward, adding with them a layer of pure matter, the membrane that covers the brain. The pia is only loosely adherent to the vessel, so is space the perivascular space. Exits between it and the vessel. Therefore, the perivascular space follows both arteries and veins into the brain as far as the arterioles and annuals go. Lymphatic function of the perivascular space. As is true elsewhere in the body, a small amount of protein leaks out of the brain capillaries into the intestinal spaces of the brain. Because no true lymphatics is present in the brain tissue, excess protein in the brain tissue leaves the tissue flowing with fluid through the perivascular spaces into the subarachnoid space. 
Upon reaching the subarachnoid space, the protein then flows with PSF to be absorbed through the arachnoidal villi into the larger cerebral layer. The perivascular spaces in effect are a specialized lymphatic system for the brain. In addition to the transporting fluid and proteins, the perivascular spaces transport extravenous particular matter out of the brain. For instance, when an infection occurs in the brain, then white cells and other infectious debris are carried away from the perivascular space. In cerebrospinal fluid pressure, regulation of cerebrospinal fluid pressure by this villi, high cerebrospinal fluid pressure in pathological conditions of the brain, obstruction to flow of cerebrospinal fluid can cause hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus means excess water in the renal vault. This condition is frequently divided into communicating hydrocephalus. Fluid flows rapidly from the ventricular system into the subarachnoidian space, non communicating hydrocephalus. Then, blood cerebrospinal fluid as blood brain barriers, a very important stuff. It has been already been pointed out that the concentration of several important constituents of CSF are not the same as in extracellular fluid elsewhere in the body. Furthermore, many large molecules hardly pass at all from the blood into the CSF or into the interstitial fluids of the brain even though this same substances pass readily into the usual interstitial fluid of the body. Therefore, it is said that barriers called blood CSF barrier and the blood brain barrier exist between the blood and the CSF and brain fluid. Barriers exist both the choroid plexus and at the tissue capillary membranes in essentially all areas of the brain, parenchyma, except in some areas of the hypothalamus, pineal gland and area postma, where substances diffuse with greater ease into the tissue spaces. The ease of diffusion in these areas is important because they have sensory receptors that respond to specific changes in the body fluids, such as changes in osmolarity and glucose concentration, as well as receptors for peptide hormones that regulate such as angiotensin 2. The blood brain barrier also has specific carrier molecules that facilitate transport of hormones such as leptin. Leptin from the blood into the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus, pineal gland and area postma. So the specific receptors that control other functions such as appetite and Sympathetic nervous system activity. In general, the blood CSF and blood brain barriers are highly permeable to water, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and most lipid soluble substances such as alcohol and anesthetics. Slightly permeable to electrolytes such as sodium, chloride, and potassium, and almost totally impermeable to plasma proteins and non lipid soluble large organic molecules. Therefore, the Blood CSF and blood brain barriers often make it impossible to achieve effective concentrations of therapeutic drugs such as protein, antibiotics, or antibodies, and non lipid soluble drugs in the CSF or parenchyma of the brain. The cause of low permeability to the blood CSF and blood brain barrier is the manner in which the endothelial cells of the brain tissue capillaries are joined to one another. They are joined with so called tight junctions, are they? So they are just closely. Attached to the system membranes of the adjacent endothelial cells are tightly fused rather than having large split pores between them, as in the case of most other capillaries of the body. Then, brain edema one of the most serious complications of abnormal cerebral fluid dynamics is the brain edema because of the brain is encased in the solid brain and vault. Accumulation of extra edema fluid compresses the blood vessels, often causing serious decreased brain flow and obstruction of the brain tissue. Features of blood brain barrier tight junctions are there, endothelial cells that are not fenestrated, closely associated layer of astrocytes, closely associated layers of astrocytes, specific degradation of enzymes, decreased vesicles in endothelial cells, increased the density of density of mitochondria. Once again, tight junctions are there, endothelial cells that are not fenestrated, closely associated layer of astrocytes. Specific degradation enzymes and decreased vesicles in endothelial cells along with high density of mitochondria.